Good morning. And so we have a full quorum. Um, just a reminder, we've started each of these meetings that we've held virtually with the notice that given the unprecedented circumstances resulting from the global uh, coronavirus pandemic Governor Baker issued in order to provide limited relief from certain provisions of the open meeting law to protect the safety of the individuals interested in attending our public meetings. In keeping with the guidance provided, the Commission will conduct this um, public meeting utilizing remote collaborative technology. And if there's any technical problem with our remote connection, we will give advice on our website as to next steps. This meeting is being recorded. Um, and I just, of course, want to be remiss if I didn't make um, reflect a little bit on the enormity of, of um, the impact of the pandemic on Massachusetts. Monday, as we all noted, marked a death toll here in the Commonwealth that exceeded 3,000. So we keep those individuals, their families, and of course their caregivers, medical personnel who treated them in our thoughts. Thank you, of course, to all on the front line and our state and local leadership um, who are working tirelessly to restore our safety and hopefully a sense of normalcy, whatever that may be in the future, um, over uh, uh, the shortest amount of time that makes good sense based on important benchmarks and data. Um, you know, the one thing about Boston and the Commonwealth, we are a resilient crowd, and I thank our team for um, being a great example of that, and thank you for doing your part. With that, we have an agenda setting meeting today. We'll get started unless um, there's anything else that one of our, um, that my fellow commissioners wish to add at this time. I can actually see all five right now, but uh, so that's great. Thank you. Um, so getting started, um, call to order today's meeting, officially public meeting number 75, and as it started uh, today on April 29th at 10 a.m. We do have minutes for approval. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, in the packet that was sent out to everybody, you have the minutes from the April 15th, 2020 agenda setting meeting. Uh, I would move their approval subject to any correction for typographical errors or any other non material Are there any questions or edits for Shara and Bruce? Okay, do I have a motion? Well, couldn't hear. Could, couldn't hear. Second the motion. Thank you, Commissioner Cameron, thank you. All those in favor, roll call. Commissioner O'Brien. Aye. Commissioner Cameron. Aye. Commissioner Zuniga. Aye. And uh, Commissioner Stebbins. Oh no. Aye. Aye. And I vote um, yes. So five zero. Thank you. We'll now move on to item number three of our agenda setting plan, uh, planning meeting. And we'll start by going through the notes. Karen, are you there? Interim executive director. Sorry, just, uh, just had to unmute. I am here, ma'am. Isn't it fun to be actually, um, to, to be part of so many jokes that are going around the universe right now on our Zoom calls? Oh, I'm new. I can't find the recording button. It's just, <laughs> we're only contributing to to the norm right now. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. So item number one, um, uh, for the, right now we have May 7th marked up as our next uh, commission meeting, although we do have two meetings this week, one this afternoon, a short one, as well as now on Friday. Right, so I would recommend, we'll just keep the administrative update. I do not expect we'll have uh, the same format where I bring in uh, directors to come and give um, sort of highlights from that department given what's going on right now, but there may be things just to update the full commission on, so we'll keep that on the agenda. Okay, great, thank you. Moving on to number two. Um, for the me next meeting or the future meeting, Todd, um, our interim general counsel, do you, Mr. Grossman, do you have any any um, regulations that you'll be reporting on? Yes, hi, good morning, everyone. 
Um, there were there are a couple actually I'd like to uh, raise. First, yesterday, uh, April 28th, the commission conducted a public hearing on two sets of regulations that are now ready uh, for final commission review. Those were uh, first those that pertain to the clarification of the use of sealed records, uh, which you'll recall. And the second pertain to certain updates to the VSE regs and specifically the reinstatement process. Um, both of those have now fully gone through the promulgation process and are ready for, again, final commission review. Um, and if uh, appropriate, there we can put them on the next agenda. Todd, I, I have just a, out of curiosity, I have a question. Did we get any participation uh, in the hearing uh, yesterday? We did. Um, specifically on the use of sealed records, we got a couple of very insightful uh, comments um, relative to the use specifically of juvenile records, uh, which we're going to take a closer look at. Um, there are written comments uh, that you can take a look at in advance, uh, and I would certainly encourage everyone to do because I think they're very well done. Um, and we will, of course, look at the legality and some of the legal issues raised in there. Um, but I think ultimately we'll be ready to go on Thursday. Um, essentially, the comments were supportive of what the commission is doing um, with the, the draft regs. They're asking that you go one step further and essentially uh, prescribe the use of juvenile records in any form. Um, but that's, that's an issue that I think the commission should really discuss um, next Thursday. Um, I'm wondering, and, uh, Todd, I, I, did, um, I did listen to those comments and, and thank the uh, three individuals who participated. I'm wondering, so for next Thursday, you're suggesting that you will have you um, and Loretta was also there, um, as well as, as the rest of the legal team. You'll take that input, and then we. Um, it could. Uh, will you be making amendments to what we reviewed in the past? And I'm just trying to understand the rulemaking process. Sure. Could they? Be substantive enough that it may one require uh, um, further, maybe more than one meeting is what I'm wondering. And then, do we have any obligation to, you know, to get back to those individuals before, or we just hear them and then we incorporate? There's no more. There's not another step if we change it. Is what I'm wondering. Right? You know, do we get back? Right. I don't, I don't think there's a legal obligation. I think practically speaking, we will be in communication with those folks. They've been engaged in the process really for many years uh, on this particular issue. And um, I think you hit the nail on the head when it comes to what the issue is. I think there's two parts. The first is the use of the sealed records is all teed up and ready for final adoption. I don't see any reason why you couldn't, if you're so inclined, adopt the amendments uh, to the regulations pertaining just to the sealed, the use of the sealed records. When it comes to juvenile records, uh, if the commission is inclined to make any adjustment to the present regulations, we would have to review whether that's within the scope of the issues raised uh, as part of the sealed record uh, process. And if so, you could make adjustments. We're in the same section. So that's the good news. So it, it's, it's before you. Whether we think it's included in the scope or not is a slightly different question and whether it would be fair, whether people were put on notice that that could be done or not. Um, and if not, we can always just commence a new uh, review process and, and what have you. But um, I think at a minimum, you can look at the sealed record portion um, for final review. So that's, uh, Madam Chair, uh, th are those two sets of regs? There's the one further one, and I'll um, maybe ask uh, Commissioner O'Brien and uh, Attorney Teresi to, to add uh, in here as to whether we're ready to move forward with the authority of the commission to act in, in the event of an emergency, which you'll recall you considered at your last uh, meeting. We did put that out for 
uh, comment to the licensees and we may be ready to move forward with those as well. Um, and for May 7th as well. I, th I think we might be close with those depending upon uh, everyone's sense. So I, uh, Carrie did forward me some feedback and comments at the end of the day yesterday. I haven't a chance to go through them. Um, I read the summary, and so I think we can keep it on for the seventh right now. But um, I have not actually done a deep dive to see if. Time. Yeah, we did. We, for now. we did receive comments back from all three licensees. Um, nothing uh, major, pretty pretty minor changes that um, I think we should be able to get it in good shape for next week. Okay. So those would be the, the three sets of regulations. And if, if it's uh, um, okay to move forward with those, we can get some language over to Marianne for the agenda. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else? That's all for now. Okay. Um, item number three, Dr. Lightbell. Um, that is uh, talking about um, what to do as far as live racing at Pine Ridge Park Casino goes. Um, right now, uh, they're scheduled to open June 1st. Um, with the governor's latest order, that may not be um, practical. And we've got, um, I've been in conversations with um, Chris McElaine from Plain Ridge, and um, we have a meeting scheduled with the horsemen this Friday to have further discussions about it. Okay, thank you. So, um, and of course, we will be addressing um, part of that issue on Friday as well at our 10 a.m. meeting um, with respect to the governor's um, order. So do you want to keep this on for five, seven weeks? I know we promised um, that community, the horse community, to, to uh, get back to them through a meeting. Does five, seven still work for you? Um, I think so. Um, the meeting this Friday just covers um, the simulcasting and account wagering. That's right, that's right. And, um, so, um, you know, we'll certainly have the conversations with them on Friday and, um, uh, you know, they'll be, we'll all be aware of each other's um, positions at that point and then um, can bring it up for the um, uh, seventh. Okay, excellent, thanks. We'll keep that on then. Um, moving on to number four, we are addressing the um, independent monitors baseline report deadline this afternoon at one. So um, I, I think we'll um, just keep that on hold for right now. And, and once we have our public meeting on that particular issue, we can address whether 5-7 continues to work. Um, item number five, that's the six month public safety report, Mark. In, uh, Commissioners Cameron and O'Brien. Hi, uh, good morning. Morning. Uh, be ready uh, for that if, um, if that's still the desire of the commission to bring that before um, on the 7th. Excellent. Commissioners Cameron and O'Brien, you're all set with that as well? Yeah, I see no reason why we can't um, continue with business and, and talk about this, get, the, get this report out. Mark, you agree, right? No I, I do. I do. It's it's. Um, oh, we should be set. We you um, could you repeat that, Mark. We you froze. <laughs> Sorry, I will get you the final report very soon. Right. Excellent, and that will include the executive summary. Correct. Excellent, and uh, yeah. So five seven. As soon as you can get it to us, we'll appreciate reading time. Yes. Thanks. All set with that, Karen? Yes. Okay, good. Um, and then item number six, back to Alex. This um, is on the Finger Lakes. Yes, uh, I'm not sure if we'll be ready um, for the seventh or not, but if we could leave it on there for now, in case we are ready um, to discuss where they may wanna um, race next year. Still trying to gather information on that. I mean, uh, this year that they would race. This year. Good, thank you. We'll keep it on. Item um, number seven. 
I'd like to see sexual harassment policies. We have that marked up for the 21st. Um, Gail and uh, Eileen. Uh, yes, uh, Commissioner O'Brien, unless you disagree, nothing has changed since we put, a, uh, put this on the schedule to, to talk about. So I think we're prepared to do that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. unless there's some reason we need space on the 21st, I think we can keep it on the 21st. Would, um, if, um, and we decided that, would it not, would it be ready for the 7th if that were, um, if that were an available time as well? I think I have to go refresh my memory, but I think so. Yeah, I believe all the work's been done and changes have been made after meetings with licensees. Um, I think we're prepared to talk about it, Commissioner. Um, Carrie, would you like to jump in and make sure since you've been doing uh, the legal changes for this project? Yeah, I know that we were prepared to present this um, at a meeting a couple months ago, so I know that it's ready. I just would have to refresh my memory about other people. We were, um, I know that we were going to have our outside counsel, our employment outside counsel um, call in. So I just want to check and see if she's available and just refresh my memory uh, about other details related to the presentation. Okay. Um, yeah. I think availability on um, the outside council is going to be um, important. So once we firm up a date, then um, we can we can confirm to date for the commission meeting. Okay. Right now we'll keep it on for the twenty first. Okay. Okay. And, and then um, commissioners O'Brien, commissioners Cameron, um, we'll work with Karen if there needs to be any switching around. Okay, thank, thank you. Thanks for that uh, excellent work. Um, item number eight, the quarterly reports, which we know are on a little bit of a different cadence right now. Um, Karen and Joe. Yeah, um, Madam Chair, my thinking on this is, you know, we should take a look at what the uh, sort of the minimum requirements are and, and uh, General Counsel Grossman's prepared to discuss that. Given that the casinos are closed right now. There's not exactly the same kind of information available to report. So this may be a time to sort of take a time out and take a look at the statutory and regulatory requirements. What exactly is required? And then the commission can look at what, what do you want during this time period? Is there anything beyond those requirements that you really need right now, given uh, what uh, the industry and the regulators are going through right now? So. Um, it, your permission, I think if we turn it over to a general counsel Grossman, he can give you an overview of what the law is and then we can jump off from there. Joe, does that make sense to you? I want to give you a chance to chime in as well. Yeah, yeah, I think that's fine. Why don't we let Todd go and then I'll give a quick update on my discussions with the licensees. Okay, that sounds good. Great. Well, I'm, I'm happy to run through the statute uh, and the regulations. Welcome anyone to jump in uh, as we move along here. And um, uh, I know you don't have the materials in front of you, so I'll try not to read too much uh, in-depth uh, language, but I'll, I'll hit some of what I think is pertinent. The quarterly report uh, is first mentioned in the statute in Section 5 of Chapter 23K. You'll recall that's the section of the law that sets out the minimum regulations that the law directs the commission to adopt. So section five says, in, in pertinent part anyway, that the commission shall promulgate regulations for the implementation, administration, and enforcement of this chapter, including without limitation regulations that require financial reports. And so, and then it goes into annual audits too, but, uh, the, the law is clear that the commission needed to adopt regulations requiring quarterly financial reports. And that's all the statute requires, which is uh, helpful to bear in mind as we move forward here. So following that directive, the commission did just uh, as it was uh, asked to do. And in 205 CMR 139.06, the commission set out uh, the filing of quarterly reports. It's broken down into two essential parts, the regulation is. The first is essentially a narrative and descriptive portion of the licensee's financial position. And the second is a certification by the licensee's CFO 
as to the truth of certain statements relating to the licensee's financial stability. So section 139.06 was intended essentially to bear some conceptual similarity to the 10Q filing that's required uh, with the SEC by public companies, but to apply it to the licensee or the LLC level, not to repeat things that have already been filed by the parent company uh, with the LLC, but to give the commission a snapshot as to the financial position of the licensees on a quarterly basis. Uh, notably, there's no requirement that there be a public presentation of any kind or anything like that, just that the report be submitted uh, to the commission. The quarterly reports you've uh, seen historically, uh, that process just developed organically, and it's certainly been useful and helpful and in many ways interesting, but uh, the rules are, are very specific as to what is actually uh, required. And we can go a little bit into the regulation um, if that would be helpful, uh, but it's important to bear in mind that since it is a regulatory requirement, if necessary and helpful to the commission and the licensees, we also have a variance process that would allow the commission to modify uh, this requirement in any way on a limited basis here, uh, assuming certain standards uh, were met. And we can get into that uh, a little bit as well. Uh, but without reading the whole thing to you, I can, I, I'll just read a few uh, pieces of the regulation that may be helpful. Um, so this is 139.06 paragraph one. It says, on a quarterly basis, the gaming licensee shall create a report that provides a continuing view of the gaming licensee's financial position, including key performance measures, narrative commentary on operating results, and where applicable, the capital reserve account contributions made in accordance with the plan that was submitted. And that has to be attested by two essentially um, executives of the uh, LLC or the company. So that's paragraph one and then paragraph two says, the quarterly report uh, shall be accompanied by a statement attested to by the gaming licensee CFO or the functional equivalent. And then it identifies four things that the CFO has to attest to. Uh, one, that the licensee has maintained and ha in the previous quarter and has the ability in the upcoming quarter to maintain a gaming bankroll adequate to pay winning wagers. Uh, B, that the licensee has paid in the previous quarter and has the ability to pay any local, state, and federal taxes, including taxes on gross gaming revenue and any fees imposed by the commission under uh, 23K or 205 CMR. Uh, paragraph C, that it has the ability to make annual capital expenditure uh, contributions um, as discussed uh, in the law. And paragraph D, that it has the ability to pay, exchange, refinance, or extend debts, including long-term and short-term principal and interest and capital lease obligations which will mature or otherwise come due and payable during the license term, um, et cetera, et cetera. So there are four things essentially in, in part two that the licensee CFO is uh, required uh, to attest to. So that's, the, that's what the law requires the financial, uh, the quarterly report to look like. Um, and, um, the commission does have some flexibility uh, in this regard. So th those are the points I thought might be helpful to make and can also, of course, uh, uh, answer any questions or, or, or look at any specific provisions a little more closely, if that would be helpful. Joe, do you want to give some information on what you've learned from the licensees? Sure. Um, so I talked with uh, Encore and with MGM uh, regarding this item. And as you might imagine, they are uh, not, they would prefer to not file uh, quarterly reports if they could. Um, they understand that there are some regulatory requirements there. And um, if the commission does require that they file a report, they are asking that it be kept to the minimum uh, information that's required, and also uh, that they would not have to, you know, present that in public 
at this point in time. You know, and I think that the point that both of them made uh, sort of in support of that, uh, that notion that they not have to file these reports is saying, you know, what are we actually going to glean from these reports? You know, we already know what their gross gaming revenues are. We know some of these other things of what their situation is. And the question was sort of, well, what, what utility would this report actually have for the commission other than to check a box that says from a regulatory requirement uh, that this needs to be done? And I, you know, and I think I would tend to agree with that interpretation and, and maybe we could defer this first quarter report and once they're back open, they can do a first and second quarter report or whatever uh, that, that would summarize that period of time. So, you know, it's some food for thought, but, but I guess the, there was a, a little bit of reluctance on the part of our, our licensees to have to, to have to do that if it's not absolutely necessary. So Karen, what are you recommending? Um, and also, uh, my fellow commissioners, if you, I can't see you right now, if um, you should pipe, pipe in, um, can only see. I, I, have a, I have a question and a comment. Great, thank you, Enrique. So um, Todd, did we, we, we do normally get uh, some of those, uh, the, you know, periodically, not, um, Quarterly, we get those certifications uh, in the actual written report, not the one that's presented. But um, are there any portions of what you read that is normally, uh, that is included in the non-disclosure agreements that we've entered into with, um, with licensees? Yeah, it's a, that's a great question. Um, the quarterly report as a whole is not covered directly, but the individual parts depending upon what's in it are covered in many ways uh, like complementary um, uh, uh, funds that are uh, other comps that are awarded are covered specifically under the non-disclosure agreement um, and certainly there might be other financial uh, metrics that are covered certain daily revenues if those are ever included in a quarterly report or anything like that so the nda is fairly uh, expansive as far as highly confidential information. Obviously, it doesn't cover the public type information like the monthly gross gaming revenues and things like that. Um, but um, uh, much of the sensitive information, I do believe, is covered in the respective non-disclosure agreements. Because I would be in favor, I understand um, their reluctance to do a lot of uh, work to satisfy the report, uh, Joe. But um, I think the narrative of the financial position uh, is especially important for us to understand during this period. Uh, it doesn't have to be very long and we don't have to bring it to an open uh, meeting necessarily. That could be something else that we discuss internally. But I think it's important for us to collectively you know, individually, the commissioners to understand what's going um, what's going on on that side during this period. So it's something that I think we should consider. Other commissioners, trying. I'm trying uh, just to being curious to know, Todd. I know that some of this is statutorily required. So it's one thing to delay; uh, it's another to to relieve altogether and or keep things confidential. So I'd be curious to hear from you either now or later offline, um, the answers to those questions. Yeah, I, I don't know that we've heard a recommendation yet, right? About, um, okay, we should just include the basics or whatever our recommendation is going to be. I know you laid out several options, Todd, um, but it, it would make sense to as Commissioner O'Brien just said, what do we have to do statutorily? What what makes sense for us to do here, or just is delaying the the one answer that we we, we could do? Well, I think I think what might be helpful just to both of those questions um, and to Commissioner Zuniga's uh, points might be uh, to put this on the agenda uh, for Thursday and spend some time over the next week um, briefing. Uh, individual commissioners and dis answering questions individually to make sure the commissioners have a good comfort level with what the statutory requirements are versus what has just historically been done 
uh, versus what you think might be useful um, so we can have a more uh, robust uh, discussion on right. Thursday. Because this is not the exact forum for it anyway. So I do think, Agreed. Uh, I, I, I do think that um, I really appreciate hearing um, the, um, the legal standards, whether they're regulatory or statutory, but I think um, it would be, for me, really helpful to not only understand the statutory ones, but also understand more clearly the regulatory ones, because we really are, must also operate in compliance with our regulations, notwithstanding the, the notion that we can vary, uh, have a variance, you know, we, it's not the best practice. So um, we should know our regulatory obligations because they stemmed from, I assume, really good policy discussions that preceded uh, me, certainly, and uh, and then the third piece, which is, um, is there anything that we need in light of where we are today that hasn't been addressed either in the statute or the regs? And, uh, and, and, and that's a kind of quarterly report. It could be a report we want from the licensees right now, period, regardless of whether it's quarterly or not. So this will give us a, a, some time between now and Thursday to think about not only the obligations under quarterly reporting, but also whether we need to hear from our licensees period on something in particular. So uh, the only thing I'm concerned about, Todd, in terms of process is that if you speak through our um, two by twos um, without any kind of a memorialized writing, we might not all be hearing the same thing. So if, I don't know if you want to memorialize in the writing or if you want to do all, all five of us in a, the same room where we can't deliberate back and you know the silent briefing that might work and it might be more efficient for you too but i leave that to you and karen to figure out how to best prepare us for a good conversation next week does that make sense there's enrique uh i mean gail yes it does yeah i uh i i think uh you know i, I don't think we are um it, it's good to shoot for next meeting if you think we need a lot more preparation, and, and the, the purpose of today's meeting is just simply to schedule or try to figure out when we're setting that agenda, um, it could easily go, in, you know, fall into the following meeting. But I think a discussion as to, you know, what's required and what is our view of, given the current situation, whether we uh, allow the fur wave or whatever the case may be, I think it may be necessary. You know, at some point. Commissioner Cameron, Commissioner O'Brien. Well, I, I think what you suggested, whatever mechanism the team thinks is appropriate to brief us all so that we're prepared for that discussion. And it sounds like that can happen and we will be prepared by the 7th to, to talk about this. Right, and whatever we can address then, we can kick over to another meeting. Commissioner O'Brien. No, I think that's fine. I think we get the basic conversation started and moving for the seventh. And to your point, if something is trickier and needs more time, then we just we can defer it till the twenty-first. Bruce, uh, I would agree with that approach. I think okay, good. Getting the basics ready. Okay, good. Um, I'll set then Karen and, and Todd on the, on that guidance. Yeah, we'll go, we'll go forward and set something up for next Thursday. Okay. All right, then um, we'll move on to item number nine, community mitigation update. We have Joe and Mary. Yeah, yeah I think it's been underway, I understand. So yeah, we, we've started our meetings with our applicants uh, this week and we'll be running those for the next few weeks. So. We have this on, I think, for the agenda, just for an update on the 4th of June, which I think we're, we're fine with. Um, uh, we should have all of our meetings done by then, and we will be deep into making our recommendations. Um, and so I think we're looking at probably the last meeting in June, whenever that meeting is, um, to make the presentations to the commission for votes on the, uh, the grants. Marianne, what is the last June date? Do you have that handy by chance? Yes. Good morning, Marianne. She's already been busy, busy, busy. Let me get out of 
the last June meeting, May 27th, is the agenda setting meeting. Um, June 4th, June 10th, June 21st, 8th, no, 20, the June 18th would be the commission meeting. Yeah. June 24th would be an agenda setting meeting. And then July 2nd would be the next. So I, I would say, I think we'll want to be on for that. Uh, did you say it was the June uh, 18th? June 4th is the commission meeting, 11th. The 18th is the next commission meeting. Okay, so I think we'd be ready for, for the 18th to do our, our final presentations on all of the, uh, um, the grant applications and for commission votes. Um, if we, you know, if we run into any hiccups there, we would probably have to push it to that July uh, 2nd. But, but I think the 18th looks good. Mary? Yes, hi. Good morning. Good morning. How's that sound to you? Um, my only concern is this year we have 37 applications and in previous years we've had about 20 to 22. So we may, whether we want to tackle all of them on one day or two, two dates maybe. maybe? I, th I think having it on the starting on the 18th gives us the ability to maybe have, if we run over, go into the next Thursday maybe and take some hours and finish it up. So that's a possibility to maybe um, reserve some time, Marianne, for the two. What do you think, Joe? Yeah, I think that, that probably makes sense. I think last year we, even with a reduced number, I think we might have gone to two days. Yeah. Um, Did we? I and, don't remember. And maybe if if we have one on the 18th, maybe we can do a a, a, a special one the next week. Right. To keep just it. just focus on that because it's you yeah. know, as as you all know, it's a it's a it's a bit of a painful process. So. <laughs> it's comprehensive. It's not painful, and it's inspiring. It is, Actually, but it is it is a little painful. <laughs> yeah, and some of some of these applications are really complex, so there's a lot of issues. And it's a high dollar amount this year, too, that we have potential right. for distribution. My fellow commissioners, any questions for Joe and Mary Ann? Mary. <laughs> oh, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's well, right. Mary Ann and I are, are used to it. <laughs> the correction for Mary, for Mary Ann. <laughs> Whatever. We, we answer to anything. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Um, so I'm not hearing any, but I am curious about your sweatshirt because we only see I'm not crazy. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. This is one of my favorite t-shirts. Can you see the rest of it? My reality is just different from yours. <laughs> I thought it was appropriate for wearing today. <laughs> very, very good. Thank you. All right. Kathy, um, I, I, think, I think that works. Maybe the two dates, but... Um, I suppose I initially thought that we could just get an update. Um, we, we do have an update date on June 4th. June 4th is the, um, the update and then we just, we went ahead to maybe marking up for the, the actual um, presentations and okay. presentations for the, for the 18th and then maybe, I like the idea of Joe doing, uh, suggesting a, a special meeting so that they're not um, bifurcated by two weeks, but maybe by just the next week. Yeah. So, you know, do two. And, and so that, it, would, that would be June 25th, the next Thursday. Okay, if we kept it to the Thursdays. Yeah. yeah. If, it were, if it weren't a Thursday, that's okay too. Does that make sense, uh, Enrique and Bruce, because you're both so involved in this? Yeah, and I think it's just, you know, I, w I was imagining an update to be uh, a, you know, a summary, not, not, not in great detail. Um, but um, it's it's good to kind of like for everybody to understand that this work continues. And as Mary says, you know, there's there's great demand. Are you okay with the June fourth date for that, or did you want it sooner, Enrique? We could do an update sooner. I mean, I can give you an update at virtually yeah. any point in time, really. Uh, it's a, I, I'll leave it up to you when you when you'd like an update. Right, right now we have it for June fourth, but if if there were a reason to keep to bring it up sooner commissioners um yeah i would love to 
see an update on the, you know, we could do an update on May 21st and see if we're prepped and ready for, you know, our June decision meetings, if that works. Does that sound sure. good? Sounds okay. good. Good. All right, that might make some good sense. It gives you a little bit of time to be, um, re you know, responsive to anything that gets raised. So, um, Marianne, can we, we switch the date for sure. item number nine to 521 instead of mm -hmm. June? And then we'll, we'll have the tentative dates of June 18th and uh, the 25th for the follow up. Excellent. Okay. Uh, other commissioners, any questions? All right, we'll move on to um, item number 10 our budget discussion. Commissioner Zuniga and, and Derek. Good morning, Derek. Good morning. Um, so I, I definitely think that this will be a discussion versus the first um, draft of the budget that we passed by you. Just we're behind in our schedule um, by a couple weeks due to everything that's been going on. Um, normally we would have the budget uh, first draft of it out to the licensees. We're still doing some internal meeting right now. Um, so that schedule is pushed back a little bit. Um, Hopefully we'll have some feedback for you from our meeting with the licensees uh, on June 4th. Um, we aim to get that out to them in the next couple of weeks after we complete our first run through it here. Um, so I'd like to keep it on for the 4th, keep pushing. And if I have better results and better meetings with the licensees, maybe it'll turn into a first draft, but I'm not hopeful of that at this point. Um, you, that sounds good. You know, we can always, sounds like we might have a couple of um, meetings, you know, followed by a week. So we have to use either the 18th um, or, the, or, the, or the 25th, um, you know, for a final budget approval, we, could, we would still make, you know, prior to June 30th. Um, so let's just, uh, let's just see how those um, conversations continue. Okay, and no change for number 10. Moving on now to item number 11 that's under, marked up for under review. Good morning, Jill. Good morning. Um, I think we can still keep this uh, grant update under review uh, just due to um, some of the outside speakers that uh, might not be ready. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. And then and that number 12, that's also you, the cultural mitigation uh, program. I, I checked in with the Mass Cultural Council yesterday, and actually it might be an interesting update. Um, they have, um, um, they're about to um, make some decisions on their mitigation grants. As you know, this funding um, comes from casino revenue. Um, they've had to repurpose their culture uh, RX or prescription program oh. to provide um, COVID-19 relief. Oh. And um, so you might be interested in hearing more about that. Yeah, so I, I, that is, that would be really interesting. Um, would they be ready uh, for a May date? Um, maybe late late May, early June. They said. Okay. Um, well, we maybe we just switched uh, the mitigation update from June fourth to May. Maybe we take the sixth, the June fourth date. Uh, yeah, I can check with them. Is Anita Walker still um, with them, or has she her retirement started? Um, she's still with them until the end of June. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Um, well, it'll be interesting to get that update because I was aware of the other program. So it sounds as though they've been, um, you know, really responsive to the current needs. So that's excellent. Anybody have any questions for Jill on that? Okay. Thank you. Item number 13. Thanks, Jill. Um, Thank you. Dr. Lightbound. Um, could we go back to the 5-7 um, meeting? Um, I had an item to put on if we could. Oh, okay, good. Um, 
the quarterly local uh, quarterly local aid payments to the cities and towns that's by statute and it's a um, you know so it should be a very uh, quick item uh, Chad Bork will have all the documents to the commissioners ahead of time we don't have that on our notes right now correct right correct okay so this is a new item yes okay Marianne did you get that okay I did, I just, um, because we're not talking about times. So when I, yeah. so when I get the language from everybody, if they could just let me know how much time they think they're gonna take, and I could figure that out. Can you just Thanks. remind us of the, um, the items I'm um, working off from an iPad and I haven't kept not as good of notes as usual. Um, so, so far for the, the seventh, we've got for the seventh, we have the, um, we still have the Plain Ridge Park race course, 2020 live racing update. Yep. And now we have the new, um, quarterly local aid payments. And then we have the new, the new regs from, um, the Todd. Regs, that's right. Yeah. And, um, we don't up in the air is the win independent monitor six month. We don't know what if there's right. going to be an um also the everett six month public safety report yeah and then still up in the air is the massachusetts thoroughbred breeders association request to race at finger lakes okay and then we're, we're adding a quarterly report discussion and i think that's it and excuse me this is loretta um good morning um, the, the IEB would have uh, an MGM <clears throat> qualifier uh, for suitability determination, which is usually a, pr a pretty quick item. Uh, so you ten minutes by May seventh, Loretta. Correct. Okay. All right. Well, that's actually really helpful, um, Marianne, because you're um, you've convinced me that we won't. We certainly won't move up, um, Commissioner Cameron's. Um, Commissioner O'Brien's and Carrie's report number seven to the seventh. I think that will be absolutely a um, comprehensive virtual meeting. But it sounds as though for Alex, uh, um, you need that additional item that that's required. I don't want you to to feel that you 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 can't move other items to the seventh um, as appropriate, given that uh, so. Right now you had under review number 13, 14, 15, and 16. Do you have recommendations for dates on those items, Alex? Those can all stay under review. Okay. And then on the other two, the second one will require a vote. The first one may require a vote on the live racing. Uh, yes, the uh, live racing would require a vote. Uh, the quarterly local aid payments would also, and yeah. um, also the Finger Lakes. Okay, thanks. And Marianne, I should have been asking about timing. I'm sorry. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Oh, my apologies. Okay, then um, those items can all stay on under review, and then we're on to item number 17, the Game Sense Impact Report. Um, yeah, hello, Anthony, sorry. Good morning. Um, yeah, I think we need to just keep that under review right now. Um, we're close. I, I expect by the next agenda planning meeting, we should be able to assign it. Okay. My apologies, everybody. I've had a slight technical challenge on the agenda. It's not loading for me now. Um, uh, Marianne, can you help me on the next item, please? Um, number 18 is the data storage and access report demo. Research um, pay, the research page on the web on website. Right, um, both of those will, will remain. Uh, the okay. uh, data access as well as the section 97 will remain under Okay, so that's 19. So 20 is the review of MGC enhanced code of ethics update. 
Yeah, I'm going to um, suggest that that be at the the last June meeting. Last if that June. works, and if it can be done sooner um, with Bruce, we'll do that sooner. But I'm going to at least put it on for a date now. Does that work okay, um, Todd and Bruce? Yes, it does. Sure. Excellent. Thanks. So, are you, are you saying June 18th or the 25th? The 18th, please. The 18th. I'm trying to find the, uh, what you sent me um, on my phone because my iPad, for whatever reason, now it won't open it. Um, so the next one would be workforce and vendor reporting template from Jill. Um, we're going to keep that under review. Okay. And then uh, 22 is compliance items update from Karen. Karen, yes. As we discussed before, we'll just keep that under review. And then the final item, I do have it now, Mary, and I've got okay. on my phone is uh, Commissioner Zuniga, New England gaming market update. Uh, yeah, um, on the review, but getting much closer, I was able to log into um, my share drive with the VPN successfully. Oh, excellent. So, um, so it's progressing. Okay, good, good, good. So now we'll go back and just see if there are other items. I know that Loretta raised one for the seventh, and um, we can go back to the seventh. In other words, any other items that anyone from the community thinks that needs to be heard by the commission as far back as the seventh or even going into July? Uh, just a question, um, Loretta, I want to make sure I don't miss it. Uh, did you send us the MGM qualifier uh, report that's for the seven, or will you uh, be sending that? Uh, yes, I'll, I'll send that uh, within the next day. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, other, other items? Karen, do you know of anything that you, we need to think about at this point? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Commissioners, do you have anything further that you want to report on? Nothing. Thanks. Nothing here. Nope. Okay, excellent. Then, barring none, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Second. And, and that was to do what? to uh, adjourn the meeting. Thank you. <laughs> For the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we'll call all those in favor. Commissioner Cameron? Aye. Commissioner O'Brien? Aye. Commissioner Suniga? Aye. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, and Commissioner Stevens? Aye. Thanks, team. Thanks, everyone, and we'll, we'll um, be convening again at 1 uh, for uh, a short commission meeting. Thank you and thank you to the entire team.